In this presentation, I'm going to talk about our experience in using OpenMP, which has proven to be a simple and effective way to target accelerator with our code Genesis. A few words about the application we are developing. Genesis stands for General Astrophysics Simulation System, which is an application we designed for parallel large-scale simulation. It has been demonstrated to big scale up to 100,000 MPI processes. Genesis is written entirely in modern Fortran using feature from Fortran 2003 and 2008 to achieve modular object-oriented design and extensible physics solver. Genesis has multi-physics solver for hydrodynamics and explicit second-order time integration. It has solver for self-gravity and with polytropic and nuclear equation of state. And it's currently being developed to solve the neutrino transport problem using gray and spectral uh, radiation transport formulation. Prior to this work, Genesis is mainly a CPU-only code with OpenMP for multi-threading on CPU. We have used Genesis to study the role of fluid instabilities in supernova dynamics, including convection and what is known as the Standing Accretion Shock Instability, or SASI. In previous simulation, we discovered that these instabilities can exponentially amplify the magnetic field of the progenitor star, which speaks to the origin of neutron star magnetic fields. On the right, here is a visualization of magnetic field during core collapse supernova event. Recently, we refactored Genesis to three major subdivisions, basics, mathematics, and physics. This allow us for a more systematic unit testing and building proxy application to explore the kind of porting work we describe here. I will note that by the end of our initial exploration, we have applied the technique we developed in using OpenMP to the whole code that is to all the subdivision of Genesis. In the rest of this talk, I will describe how we use OpenMP offload to target accelerator. Initially, we consider the path available to us in targeting accelerators. One option is to use the native accelerator programming model such as CUDA or HIP for NVIDIA and AMD GPU respectively. This however will require us to rewrite all of our computational kernels and also the loss of Fortran semantics including multidimensional array and pointer array remapping and it will also require a way to interface with the rest of the Fortran code. Another option is to use extension to the base language, in this case CUDA Fortran. But then again, this is a non-standard extension to Fortran, only supported by few compilers non-uniformly. And another issue here is that we cannot easily fall back to standard Fortran for post-only code. We decided instead to use OpenMP because it is a standard test directive and in which we can also retain all of our Fortran semantics and support for OpenMP with offload feature is increasingly available by more compiler. And we have an existing implementation on our current target platform that is the Summit Supercomputer at the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility. In Genesis, the heart of our data storage facility is a class called storage form. This class has data and metadata as its member and the metadata can include units, variable names for I.O. and visualization. And we use this class to group together a set of related physical variables, for example, the fluid variable. Utilizing this class in all of our software, render our software to be more generic and simplified code for I.O., ghost exchange, prolongation and restriction in AMRMS, and so on. Here's an example of how we initialize a storage form object. In this case, a rank two array is allocated on the host with six rows and six columns. The rows usually correspond to the cells on the mesh and the column correspond to the variable such as pressure, density, energy, and so on. When we call allocate device method, a mirror allocation is created on the GPU memory with the corresponding total size. However, 
host to device association is made per variable that is column wise. In this case, there is a separate association for each variable such as density, pressure, and energy. The bits of code on this slide illustrate how this association are made. The association is done this way so that our solver can address each variable independently. By establishing these associations, we tell the OpenMP runtime the data location on GPU for each of the variable on the host. This avoids implicit allocation and data movement on the kernel of load region of our code. For some of its API calls, OpenMP 4.5 only provide C interfaces, so we have created Fortran wrappers to these calls to use in Genesis. The subroutine allocate device is our Fortran wrapper to OMP target alloc, which allocate memory on the GPU. The subroutine associate host is a wrapper to OMP target associate pointer which causes reference to a Fortran array value appearing in appropriate OMP OpenMP directive to be interpreted as referring to the device memory. Update device and update host are our data transfer wrappers to OpenMP target memcopy. This subroutine lets let us have affirmative control of data movement with persistent memory allocation on the device. On this slide, we give an example of how we put all of this together to offload a computational kernel. On the right box here, the storage form object F is initialized with the number of cells and number of variables. And then the method allocate device is called to mirror the allocation on the GPU memory. And then we call update device to update the GPU memory with data from the host and then we call the kernel add kernel with the appropriate variable as the argument to the kernel. Note here that during allocate device we not only make the allocation on the device but also done the per variable association as we have seen on previous slide. Inside the subroutine add kernel we add the directive OMP target teams distribute parallel do to offload this computational kernel on the GPU. Note that in this offload, there is no implicit data transfer and there is no explicit map clauses because all the association and allocation is already done previously prior to the call to this kernel. So again, it is important to note that the only changes to the kernel code is just this directive to offload this computational kernel to the GPU. It is also worth noting the degree of flexibility available in the mapping of host program variables to device memory in computational kernels. In our fluid dynamics problem, as is of course the case in general, some of our kernels require knowledge of special relationship in the data, in particular, such as the nearest neighbor or wider stencils. In this example problem, a single level rectangular mesh is employed so that the stencil relationship can be represented through appropriate indexing of rank three array embodying discretized 3D position space. Such 3D arrays can be obtained from a column of data with the Fortran pointer remapping facility. For example, here, two local rank three pointer variable V and DV are three-dimensional views of particular variable inside the storage form object F and DF. The bounds of these pointers are appropriately modified to account for the ghost cells on the subdomain. We then use these pointers variables v and dv as arguments to the subroutine compute differences x. Now because the storage form objects f and df have already been allocated and associated with the correct memory location on the GPU, any reference to v and dv in an offloaded kernel would translate correctly to the memory location on the GPU. On this slide, we see the content of the subroutine Compute Differences X 
called with v and dv as its arguments. Again, I wanted to note that the only change to this subroutine to offload it to GPU is the addition of the OpenMP target directive. Also note here that there is no explicit mapping clause needed, nor there is any implicit data movement during the kernel execution. As a concrete working example of targeting GPU with OpenMP directives, we use our implementation to solve a Riemann problem using Genesis Basics. Riemann problem is an extension of the classic 1D SOT shock tube, a standard computational fluid dynamic test problem to 2D and 3D. Figure 1 shows the initial and final state of 1D and 3D versions of Riemann problem after being evolved to time t equals 0 0.25. On the initial state, a high-density, high-pressure gas is separated by a membrane which is removed at time t equals zero. As the gas evolves, shock wave forms moving to the right. In this plot, blue is the velocity and red is the pressure and green is the density of the fluid. This is a pseudocode outlining fluid dynamic evolution in Genesis Basics. Its iteration of this main loop is a second order Ranga Kata consisting two substep, which consists of several computational kernel. This is the version of pseudocode for the GPU, except for the addition of the transfer operation, the algorithm is the same almost line by line. The, the only difference here is that every computational kernel now is done on the device. So then the task here is to offload this kernel to run on GPU with OpenMB, which we have shown before. We perform our work on Summit at the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility. Here we have a diagram of Summit Compute Node, which consists of two IBM Power9 processor and six NVIDIA Volta GPU. Its Power9 has 21 physical core available for running user's application. Three GPUs and a Power9 socket are interconnected with NVLink. Two Power9 sockets are connected by an XBus. From this diagram, we can see that a fair performance comparison between the CPU and GPU version can be obtained using what we call the proportional resource tests where we compare the performance of seven physical CPU cores using multi-threading OpenMP versus one GPU with OpenMP offload. On this slide, we show the weak scaling of the 3D Riemann problem with 256 cube cells assigned for each MPI process. The wall time here includes data transfer between host memory and GPU memory in the GPU version of the code. Near ideal speed up with multi threading is achieved. We have run this test up to 8000 GPUs on Summit and obtains between 12 to 15x speed up on the GPU compared to the 7 CPU threads. Here we plot the timing for each kernel in the Riemann problem application in Genesis Basics. Since this is a timing plot, lower value is better. On this plot, we compare its kernel performance using either OpenMP threading with 7 CPU core or OpenMP offload to GPU. The first bar with light blue color in every kernel is four OpenMP CPU threads with the IBM XL compiler on Summit. The red bar represents the same OpenMP threading with GCC compiler. Note that the plots for CPU threadings are scaled down by 25x in order to fit this plot. So the actual timings for the kernels using CPU threadings are 25x higher. The yellow bar represents OpenMP offload to the GPU with the XL compiler. For performance comparison, we have also ported some kernels to CUDA. Their timings are represented by the green bars. Since we have not ported all kernels to CUDA, some kernels do not have the timings for the CUDA version yet. There are two things to note here. First, we can see that we achieve significant and meaningful speed up for every kernel when OpenMP offload is used. Secondly, for the kernel that we have ported in CUDA, we see 
performance parity between OpenMP offload and CUDA for almost all kernels. This is somewhat in contrary to the previously hold common wisdom that says that CUDA kernel will be the best performing. For at least in this case, we see that OpenMP offload can get as good performance with good implementation from the compiler. On this slide, we plot the speed up of each kernel from 7 CPU cores using OpenMP threading to GPU using OpenMP offload. As we can see on this plot, each kernel achieves significant speed ups. In conclusion, from our experience, we can say that OpenMP provides a simple yet effective path to port Fortran code to run on accelerators. It is also encouraging that more compilers are including support for the latest OpenMP standard with offload. We also note that we were able to achieve performance parity for most of our kernels between OpenMP offload and vendor-specific accelerator programming models such as CUDA. However, there are several benefits for us in using OpenMP, in that it is more portable and standardized approach and can be more natural to the applications since we do not need to rewrite kernels. We can also continue to exploit features of the base language, Fortran in our case. This, however, requires that compilers do a good job in optimizing their OpenMP implementation. As a closing note, our code and paper describing this work in more details are publicly available in our GitHub repository and as a preprint publication in archive. Thank you for your attention.